Hey guys, this is part one of my Rise of Skywalker review. This is going to be spoiler filled. There's going to be spoilers everywhere. So if you don't want to know spoilers, don't watch this. Also, if you liked The Last Jedi, if you liked that movie, The Last Jedi, don't watch this. Turn off, turn it off right now. I, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I am not here to destroy anybody's ideas about what happened. If, if you uh, like that movie, that's fine. I realize that everybody brings, everybody goes to a movie with uh, a certain expectation or they bring something to a movie. They may bring just the desire to watch a movie for two hours and say, hey, I'm going to watch a movie, I'm going to unplug from the world, and then after it's over, I'm going to just leave it behind. And that's fine. There is an argument to be made that that's a more pure movie-going experience than what I do. I get emotionally invested in these movies. I've been involved in this franchise for um, 40 years. For 40 freaking years, okay? So I'm going to tell you what I thought and why I thought it. Part one is the problem with C-3PO. C-3PO in this movie has an issue after they find the dagger, uh, the Sith dagger. He can read it. He knows what it says. He just can't speak it aloud. Um, I guess, or write it down. Maybe that was mentioned and I just missed it. But he can't relay to anyone else what the meaning of the inscription says. What they figure out is, if they reboot his system and do a, a memory wipe, it will erase the program that the Republic, I'm, I'm assuming, I think the Republic put this program in there that forbids him from speaking the Sith language, which is dumb anyway. I don't understand what the big deal is with speaking the Sith language. Are they afraid that if someone hears the Sith language, they're going to turn him into a Sith? Or it's going to, or they're going to start being able to read Sith texts, you know, and <laughs> and that they'll turn into Sith. I don't know. I guess they're just so scared of the Sith they don't want him to say it. So anyway, they find they figure out a way. Everybody, everybody seems to know somebody that can do it, and they take him to this guy, and little little short dude, and he basically wipes his memory, which which takes away that program that prevents him from speaking or writing the Sith language, but he can still translate things. Um, he still has that part of his memory. Uh, conveniently, that part still remains. Um, so, there's a scene where it, it's it's supposed to be emotional, and I'm sure you've seen it in the uh, the the trailers. What uh, what are you doing there, three PO? Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. That's, this is the scene where he's getting ready to be mind-wiped. And it's it's like someone you've known for 40 years suddenly has amnesia and they don't know you. Okay? Um, I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't speak to that, but I can imagine how horrible that would be. You know, to say, hi, I'm C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. Who are you? Okay? That's, that's, it, there's nothing there to him. What makes him C-3PO is gone. He's just a droid now. Uh, he looks like C-3PO, but there's lots of droids that look like C-3PO. There's only one C-3PO. And I know people give C-3PO a lot of grief, but man, C-3PO has really come through in pinches in the, in this saga, okay? I mean, I know everybody's like, oh, C-3PO, get out your golden rod or whatever, but when he, when they need him, he's really handy, you know? And, and he's been there forever. I mean, come on. So, okay, so back to this moment where he's being mind-wiped. You know, he's like, Poe goes, what are you doing there, C-3PO? Because he's just standing there. He goes, Taking one last look at my friends. And that is is like the last thing he's going to say before he, in effect, dies of me mecha uh, mechanical death, basically. A memory death. And there's a sacrifice to translate the Sith thing that they think is, is really important. He has to sacrifice himself. And he, does it, but he doesn't want to do it at first, but then he finally does and realizes, I have to do this for gr the greater good. M he mind wipes, and me or memory wipes, I'm sorry. And he comes back on, he translates it. And it's like he's just gone. There's no more C-3PO. But there was a little, there was a little bitty thing they, they sprinkled in right before he did that. He goes, "Well, can't R2D2 just re re restore your memory? He's been with you forever." He goes, "He goes, oh please, R2D2's memory systems are highly unreliable." You know. Well, I've never thought that at all. I thought it was pretty daggum reliable. Um, so he mind wipes, and they get the information, and they take off. They take him with him, and it's like that was his sacrifice. He is sacrificing his identity, who he is. Is that supposed to be one of those those gut wrenching things where it affects you? It's like every time you see C three PO, you think that's the way he ends up. You know, C three PO C three PO doesn't even make it to the end of the saga. You know, intact, me mentally, 
You know, he has to sacrifice his mind, his memories of everything that's happened, his friendships. That's where your friendships live in your memories. He sacrificed all that for the greater good. And it's a sacrifice. But guess what? He just gets his memory back about 20 minutes later. He's missed out on maybe 30 minutes of real-time life in the movie. They totally take away his sacrifice. He's like, oh, I'm back. What did I mean? I'm going on a mission with uh, uh, you know, Miss Ray. It's like, no, no, we've already done that. So, oh, really? What happened? You know, it's, like, it's turned into a joke. It's turned into a freaking joke. This movie is two days old. It's two days old, guys. This movie is going to be 10 years old one day. It's going to be 20 years old one day. And every time you watch this and you watch that scene where they're wiping his mind, you're going to go, oh, yeah, that doesn't really matter because he's going to get a memory back about 20 minutes. So this really has no emotional impact anymore. This is the end of the saga. This is where consequences really have to start being applied. And they totally took that away from him. Or Titanic. Imagine if at the end, Jack's falling down in the water and Rose is watching him sink into the never-ending cold abyss of the earth. You know, she's... <laughs> and all of a sudden he jumps back up and lands on the thing and goes, Ah, I'm back! He, there's another piece of wood over there and he's able to grab onto it and get back up there. He's like, hey, I made it! I found another piece of wood! It takes away his, his sacrifice for, for someone he loves. They're, that's noble. You totally rob him of that. You know, and people may say, well, yeah, but he still makes a sacrifice. Yeah, but in the end, when people will say, C-3PO walks back up to him and says, hey, everybody, I'm back. I got my memories back. R2, restore my memory. You go, hey, way to go. All right, C-3PO. Appreciate it. You know, that, good, good job out there. Like, no. When they walk by him and go, oh, yeah, there's C-3PO. Yeah, that's the droid that really helped us out. Man. Yeah, he doesn't remember us, but we had to wipe his memory to get that Sith tech, the Sith language translated. Remember that? God, man, that was beast mode. That guy, he did it. He pulled it off. But now it's like he's still there and annoying people. <laughs> you know, it's like it has no meaning. That could have been an arc like no other. He starts off as Anakin's junk toy that he made for his mom. And at the end, he's sacrificing himself to translate Sith language so they can beat the Emperor. <sighs> I'll tell you what would have been an awesome ending for C-3PO. They're in there saying, hey, C-3PO, what are you, what are you looking at? Saying one last look, look, taking one last look at my friends. And all of a sudden, they do the mind wipe. He comes back up, translates it, but he's still connected with the wires, and he can make the translation. But if he disconnects from those wires, it's all gone. He shuts down. Everything's gone. All his language is everything. Okay? And, they, and, and he, they have to leave him there with that guy. You know, he says, I'll take care of him. You know, I, he if you take it, he's gonna be worthless. He's just hunk of junk. He won't work anymore. It'll, it'll fry every system he has. And he's he just you can take his skeleton. You can take his outside with him, the golden. You take his face with you just um, as a trinket. But I'll keep him here running, and I'll you know take care of him. And they have to leave, and they say goodbye to these people. And he doesn't remember them, and they're looking at him going, "Well, we gotta go." And they walk out and leave him there, and that's where his story ends. From Anakin's house on Tatooine, Anakin's little trinket thing he's working on, to that end. That's an arc, guys. That is an arc for a character. Throughout the entire saga, all the things he's done led him to that room. And they're having to walk away, looking back at him. And he's got to stay there. They can't take him with them. That's an arc. That would have been epic, an epic ending of C-3PO. Dude, you robbed him. Now, what's his ending now? How, how did how did his character arc at the very end of the very end of Rise of Skywalker? You probably don't even remember because it's just who cares? He's there. Mm. But man, if you watch that movie, you go, dude, they had to leave him there. That's that's sad. That is truly sad. Uh, he's been so much to the to the rebellion, the resistance, the alliance, whatever you want to call it, and that's where he ends up. Totally robbed. Totally robbed. They totally messed up C three PO. I'm sorry if you don't agree that they messed him up. End of part one, Palpatine's coming next. I'll see you in the next one.